Hello, and welcome back to the How to Use Famitracker video series. This lesson will focus on creating an instrument and then talk about the basics of inputting notes into the pattern window to create your first loop. As we discussed in the last video, an instrument is basically a collection of preset parameters for a channel. So this allows you to modify the volume and arpeggio and create different pulse widths for your pulse channel. An instrument with no parameters will play the same pitch and volume until that note is turned off or another note is played because all of these pattern or all these channels are monophonic. So basically what the instrument pattern or what the instruments do is they create presets. So you can create plucks and echoes and arpeggios to save space on the pattern window because adding all those effects on here would get really cluttered really fast. Uh, so to create an instrument, you just click this add instrument button and it creates an instrument named New Instrument. I would highly recommend to rename this to something else. I'm just going to name it Main right now. Um, just because you're going to be creating a lot of instruments on here over the course of create, writing a song, so it's useful to have them all named. So if you want to edit an instrument, you just double click it. And this is the Instrument Editor. Over in the Instrument Settings section over here, we see a list of all the available effects for this instrument. We have Volume, Arpeggio, Pitch, high pitch and duty noise. Now pitch and high pitch are ones that we're not going to talk about in this lesson because they are they're not really more advanced but they're not used as often when it comes to just writing basic loops. So the the volume is pretty self-explanatory. It controls the volume over time. The arpeggio allows you to play multiple notes very quickly creating the um, basically the semblance of chords and the duty noise changes the tone or basically how Famitracker renders certain audio channels, specifically Pulse 1 and Pulse 2, because it changes the pulse width. Um, <clears throat> so for starters, um, we can check this box over here to enable the instrument, or to enable the effect for that instrument. And you notice this middle bar, or this middle column right here that has the number. And this is actually pretty cool because it allows you to share um, envelopes. You could like share a volume envelope between multiple instruments. So number zero is basically going to be this envelope, and if you want to share it with a different instrument, you just set it to zero. So that's useful if you have a lead and you have like a, something else in the background, you want it to have the same on, um, volume envelope, or if you want it to say have the same arpeggio, that allows you to share those without having to recreate it every time. So to create a volume envelope, you have to basically tell it how long you want that envelope to be. So we can say that this is 100 milliseconds long, or six six bars. And then all I have to do is just click and drag or you can just click individually. Now be aware that this last note right here is what's going to be played indefinitely so if you want the note to stop playing when um, when the envelope is done be sure that your last bar or your last column here is set to zero. You'll also know that it created a little text thing right down, a text representation of your of your envelope so you can actually copy and paste this elsewhere or you can um, just like save it in a text file if you really need to, if you have one that you like a lot. Because these can get really complex. You can add a ton of envelopes if you want to get complex, or you can create like an, uh, an echo effect like that. So there's a lot of things you can do. But for now, I'm just going to keep it, uh, keep it simple at like six and just go like that. Okay, so the arpeggio allows you to um, tell Famitracker to basically play a lot of notes very rapidly. And um, it's created the same way, so you, you have your notes, but this time they're starting in the middle, and this is essentially like your root note or your center tone. So if you're hitting A on a piano, this is just going to play A. However, you can move these up and down, and they'll play different notes. So if we have this, so it's playing 0, 3, and 10, if we hit like C on, the, on, a, on a piano, it's going to be playing C, D flat, and B flat, so it's basically playing like a seventh chord without the without the um, dominant. Um, it's also important to note that you can loop these by clicking on this uh, gray bar underneath the the pattern editor here, the sequence editor. So if you want it to loop, you can actually have it loop this loop forever until the note is turned off. Um, you can also set it here so it just loops these last two sections, but usually you want to loop the entire chord. Finally, the duty noise section kind of handles similar to the volume section, so you're able to set a bar like this. Um, however, this changes how the instrument sounds more than how um, 
like the volume or like how um, loud it is or anything. So it's it's important to note that you can make some pretty gross sounds if you um, just set this to loop because it's changing the pulse width multiple times per like frame and it it can get uh, it can get really messy really fast if you if you um if you don't if you don't play nice with it. Um, it should also be noted that the noise, or the triangle channel rather, the triangle channel isn't affected by duty noise or volume. So the triangle channel is always at maximum volume and it's not affected by the duty noise um, at all. So um, this, is, this is good to know when you're basically making your stuff because you have less flexibility with the triangle channel. It's also important to know that you don't always have to create an instrument for everything you do. In fact, when I make my projects, I almost always have an instrument just named empty, which has nothing in it. And this allows me to just use it as a, as a blank canvas so I can add my own effects to it if I want. Like if I just want a simple like fade out, I don't have to create an entire instrument for that fade out. I just do it in the empty channel or the empty instrument and then I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so let's stop talking about making things and actually make something. So I'm actually going to create a new project here. And um, let's work on creating a simple loop. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new instrument. I'm just going to name it empty, like I always do. And um, it's empty because we don't have any parameters on it. And that way, it's not being affected by anything. Now, once this lesson is done, you can take what we make here and go into this instrument editor and mess around with stuff and see what happens when you change things. Excuse me. Um, because you can do some pretty cool stuff just by making some pretty minute changes. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is arm record mode. So right now, this, this bar right here is blue, meaning that we can't actually enter any notes. So if we hit space bar, that turns it on. Otherwise, the red circle up here turns it on and off as well. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have our cursor in the top left corner, which means this is where we're going to input our first note. And then all you have to do is hit the Z key. And we've made our first note. Now, it's important to look at the data that we created here. So it looks like we, we uh, inputted a note at C3 using the instrument number 00. So the instrument number is right here, and we created a note at C3. Um, if for some reason the note was not created at C3, I would double check your octave drop-down menu here to make sure that it wasn't set at like a different number because this is what determines that. So adding notes using your keyboard takes a little bit of getting used to, but I did create this image, which will pop up over my face, that um, helps you a little bit in figuring out how exactly the, the computer keyboard works in relation to a piano keyboard. Um, you'll notice that Z and Q basically work as C, and then you can move up in relation to a piano keyboard um, with the black and white notes all the way up an entire octave. So you have two octaves to work with on a, on a computer keyboard. Uh, it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, once you get the hang of it, it can actually work really quickly. Um, if, you look at the, if you look at the description below this video, I will have an Imgur link to this image. So you're able to download it and uh, use it on just your computer so you don't have to keep referencing this video. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to add a note cut, which turns off a note. By default, I believe this is the one key. So if you hit that, you'll see that it inputs a solid green line right here. If for some reason it didn't do that, you can go into your file configuration and edit your note cut default key right here. It should be to one, but I've heard that sometimes it isn't. So what this does is this turns off playback of the note. So right now we have a C3 that plays for one, two rows, and then is turned off. So this is basically an eighth note. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the rest of this example and add the rest of the notes. And at the end, we'll have four bars of chiptune music. Okay, so right here, I actually need to jump down an octave. So I can either use the octave drop down up here to bring it down to two, or on the numpad, I have the star and the slash key at the top of the numpad, and this allows me to move up and down in the octaves. 
So you can see the two and the three moving up here. So I can actually change this really quickly using the star and the slash key on my numpad. So that's what I'm going to do. And I moved it down an octave instead of up. There we go. Okay, so that's all we have for our first loop. Now, this looks a little confusing at first, um, and it definitely takes a little while to get used to, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show an image of a piano roll and an image of sheet music over my face, because that's probably the least important part of this, <laughs> this screen. And um, this is the same notes, except in different formats. So once you get used to reading it like this, it's a lot easier. So these are the notes, and I'm going to play this now, and you can follow along. So there we go. We've created our first loop. Um, if we wanted to make this a little bit fancier, and I am—I um, actually have something that I created for the, the blog post. So we can add this, and I'm actually not going to play this. I'm going to have you input all those notes and then play it yourself to see how it sounds. And also, don't forget that you can go into the instrument editor up here and mess around with these notes. These are both instrument 00 on both of these channels. So if you mess around with this, it will affect everything. So you can make some pretty cool stuff that way. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's your first chiptune loop. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about uh, effects, or at least the common effects that you can use to manipulate uh, instruments on the fly, which is a lot of fun and where a lot of the more interesting and intricate parts of Famitracker come into play. So if you have any questions about this video, uh, feel free to get in touch with me through the YouTube comments below or through my Twitter handle that's displayed above. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, uh, please consider giving it a like, giving uh, my channel a subscribe, because I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of this stuff in the future, and uh, just trying to boost the signal in general. Um, all of that really helps. So I'll see you guys in the next video. You have a good one. Thank you.